You're welcome back. Earlier in the news, I told you that the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Mohamed Namu, will be joining us on the news to shed more light on the two decisions taken by the agency, which is quite a surprise to so many Nigerians. You're welcome to Network News. Uh, good evening, my sister. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you join us. Um, this week has been brought sort of surprise to the nation as you took two fundamental decisions, that is the ceiling of the NDDC on the ground of not paying tax for many years, and uh, the multi-choice group with 1.8 trillion naira, you know, non-payable, which they've not paid in tax. And um, this is quite a serious situation. Can you tell us more about it? Thank you very much uh, for the comment. Uh, if you recall, sometimes in April, we did some publications, one directed at uh, the Ministry, Department, Agencies for Government, and uh, the second one directed at private business entities. In the publications, we gave the Ministry, Department, Agencies for Government 60 days in which we expect that all monies, tax monies in their custody, that they have deducted from their contractors' uh, payment should be remitted because these monies are monies that government releases to them who fund uh, uh, their budgetary requirement. But when they deduct and they refuse to re uh, remit them to the government, government find it difficult to fund uh, its critical uh, uh, budgetary requirement. And as such, government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the, the subnationals continue to borrow money in many cases to fund their budgetary requirement. That is the foundation of the issues. We draw the attention to the requirement of law. We draw the attention to the fact that they were just agents of collection and as I can assure you, and for the lack of um, compliance, task compliance culture in Nigeria, the same agencies of government that ordinarily should help the government that appointed them to serve this country re are continually refusing to remit taxes that they deducted from payment to contractors. Okay. And on the part of uh, multi choice, this is a company that has operated in Nigeria for a long time, and uh, it is on record that in the past five years, Federal Inland Revenue Service has made all efforts to ensuring that it audits the tax returns and records of the company. But I can assure you, they have continually denied us access to their records. They have continually okay. refused. If if I, might, if I might come in, it, yeah. if, I might, if I might come in, 18 years is quite a long time. Why did it take so long? And um, why bringing it up, it up now? And what is the response of the two entities to these decisions you've taken? Thank you very much. Uh, the agencies, uh, the, the, the entities have come up uh, strongly to ensure that we sit down with them on the round table so that we discuss and iron out the, the issues, including uh, officials of government at even uh, uh, levels that you least expect. So what has happened in this case, particularly that of multi-choice, that apart from the fact that we have been continuously engaging in the last five years, uh, five years. On the 16th of September 2020, we received an intelligence of the aggressive way they have been planning their tax uh, returns to, to the government of Federal Republic of Nigeria by of manipulating the FRS automated tax system, or manipulating and in the situations of subscription payment not seen on their entire system, Advertisement uh, reported on systems show, show up less than 50% of revenue collected. Input VAT 
does not reflect sales of decoders and number of subscribers. There were also issues surrounding fluctuation VAT remitted, despite increase one on the VAT rate by the Nigerian government, better uh, and also increase in valuable sales and services. There is also the most worrisome of, of it all. You, if you look at the data we provided, Nigeria accounts for about 34% of the record that is available to us of the customer base and revenue base of uh, multi-choice. But one thing that Nigerians have not maybe heard from us is that multi-choice, because of the number, because of the volume of the transactions, have also a dedicated server for Nigeria, for the customer base of Nigeria, a dedicated one. And that server is located outside Nigeria. So all efforts by any person to have access to that uh, the server has been very, very, very unsuccessful. And that is why we have to take this uh, position that we have taken now. Okay, indeed. Um, uh, apart, apart from the multi-choice group, the some HDDC office from the reports I read earlier are still open. So what other measures are you taking to enforce payment of these taxes? Well, we have discussed extensively, like I told you, even with some cabinet members, and uh, we have reached an agreement which would make known to Nigerians between now and Monday on the way forward because, like uh, I responded, uh, 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 one of the persons you interviewed said, we are agencies of government and we should not be seen to be fighting, but at least what we have done is just send a signal to any ministry, department, or agencies of government that business is not going to be usual in this country. You cannot keep government money and you force government, whether at local government, state at or at federal level to continue to go borrowing. You know that wherever goes borrowing, it is said continually go to uh, goes are borrowing. So this is why we have taken this decision and for purpose of peace and for the fact that the businesses will continue and for the staff to resume office, our position will be made known to the Nigerians between now and Monday. So how would these banks, you know, sort of selected banks implement the getting back your money to the coffers of the federal revenue, the, the freezing of the account? The bottom line now is that it is a crime, not on, only a, an offense, for any commercial bank in Nigeria to release any money belonging to multi church Africa or releasing any money belonging to multi church Nigeria from the multi from the, this company's account to any member of that company and or to any service provider. You should know one thing. Tax debt is a priority debt all over the world. So for that purpose and for the instruction we are giving to them in line with the relevant sections of the law, it is now and it will it will be it will, it will be unfair of them because they know the consequence for them not to sweep all the balances in the multi choice account into federation account having received the instruction from us. So we want to assure you that the banks know the implication of this and they have not got option than to making sure that all payments or all in credit into that account from the time the, from the moment they got uh, the instruction from us remains the money that belongs to me and you interviewing us in other words the money belongs to all nigerians and it should not be allowed to be taken by anybody including shareholders uh, and other stakeholders of uh, multi-choice Okay, thank you so much, Mohammed Nami, Fed, uh, Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Service. We do hope that these decisions will spur other entities to pay their tax on time. Thank you so much for coming on Network News. I appreciate you. Thank you. Now, in order to forestall impending industrial unrest in Kaduna State, the federal government